Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Bass Fishing for Noobs here on the Paddle and Fin Podcast. I'm your host, Sean. And I'm Susie Q. So uh, for those of folks who are checking us out on YouTube or uh, Facebook, uh, that uh, teaser promo was uh, brand new, um, pretty much just uh, released earlier today, yesterday or today. So um, we're just teasing it up that, uh, again, coming back to Dale Hollow again next year. So get uh, get signed up and, uh, you know, put it on your calendars um, and uh, make sure you're, that you're there because it's going to be every year we keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, um, you know, last year was huge um, as far as prize money and stuff. Definitely some crazy things. And this yeah. year is going to be probably even bigger. So um, we had... We over two thousand dollars each day for big bass who else has done that nobody so, so yeah yeah and you can see from the video you know it's always a good time you know uh, i look forward to it every year just getting to see my co-hosts and um all the paddle and fin family in person and you know a lot of uh you know the people that you know listen every day or every week and uh kind of reach out to us and you know, all the fans and stuff, getting to see them and, and compete on the water with you guys is, is a lot of fun. And, you know, we sprinkle in big names like uh, Christine Fisher and that kind of thing, too. So, you know, you get to fish against some of the, you know, top anglers in the country as well. So, you know, definitely a fun event. So make sure you guys get scheduled. Uh, put that on your schedule and, you know, we'll see you down there next year. Heck yeah. I'm super excited. It's a definitely. good time. Yes. Time. So, um, Tonight, um, you know, uh, last uh, was it two episodes ago, we had Randy Long on, who I joked that was the smallmouth whisperer. And uh, if he's the smallmouth whisperer of P uh, Pennsylvania, then uh, tonight we are lucky to have uh, another smallmouth whisperer from a, a state just to the left of that. Uh, I want to introduce Mr. Ryan Dahl, um, Ohio man himself. So. <laughs> How are uh, you well, doing, guys? Good. Thanks so much for coming on, Ryan. I appreciate that, man. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. No problem. So, um, you know, uh, I've heard a lot about you just through, you know, the Smalley Games and, you know, uh, kind of following along with that and that, that group on Facebook and stuff. But uh, for the folks that might not know you, um, let them know uh, who you are, uh, kind of where you're from and, um, you know, what brought you to fishing and, you know, how you, you know, got started with that. All right. Well, hey, everybody. How you doing? I'm Ryan Dahl. Um, I'm 41 years old. I live here right around Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I'm addicted to smallmouth pretty much. That's the best of it. I've always fished my whole life, but you know how you start out doing the, the bluegill and the crappie and stuff with my dad and my grandpa and I remember at a real young age, I always, we had this creek that ran behind the house and I was running off to the creek every day, flipping rocks, catching crawdads. And I would even get grounded when I was little because I was kind of a troublemaker, but I would sneak out of the house when I was grounded to go fishing in the creek. So <laughs> I've always loved it. And then, um, uh, do you fish mostly now, uh, out of a boat or a kayak? So I would consider myself kind of like a kayak bank angler. I, I do a little bit of everything. I'll put the waders on and go wading or, you know, if I don't have enough time to get the kayak out of the truck and I do have a torpedo, but sometimes you only have a couple hours. So I'll go bank fishing and I don't even have to put the waders on. Um, one of the rivers that I fish, you have a lot of bank access, so you can literally walk miles up and down the river bank and you don't even need a kayak. And I, I know just from our, you know, chatting with you to when I was talking about bringing you on and you were sharing some pictures of some pretty big tanks from pulling in on the bank. I, I don't have that much luck from the bank. You know, I, I can catch a few here and there, but nowhere near the size that you were catching. And uh, so I was like, wow. Bank fishing is really cool and it's really popular around here. Like smallmouth fishing around here is really taken off. And so our <laughs> river, kind of like you were talking about before, it's not the Susquehanna. It's a lot smaller. You know, it's maybe 
50 yards across in some areas. Some areas even, you know, 25, 30 yards. And you can cast from one end to the other in a lot of spots. So a lot of people love the bank fishing. Yeah, no, I could see where that would be a lot, a lot of fun. And, um, you know, the fact that you have that access is, is pretty cool because not everybody has the means to, to, you know, have a kayak or a boat where you can get out on water. It, can you even run like a boat up through that? Is it, is it boatable? So you could, so we have a few boat ramps on the river, but you can't really get anywhere unless you have a jet boat. And even then, some places this so shallow that you're not even going to pass them in a jet boat. There's a couple sections of the river that are kind of like behind some of the dams. It kind of makes a reservoir type area. So it's kind of deep, slow water. And you can run a boat with a prop in some of them areas for maybe a half a mile to a mile. Okay. And then, you know, it turns back into more like a river. So. Gotcha. You don't see a lot of boats on the river, though. Most I was going to say. Gotcha. Gotcha. Is it pretty popular with kayakers, too, then, I imagine? Yeah. It, in the last couple years, it's really blown up. Um, you used to be able to go kayaking and float five to ten miles and maybe see one or two kayakers. And most of the time, you probably wouldn't see anybody. But now, every weekend, you're trying to race to the ramp to be the first one in you know how that is like oh, oh yeah you'll pull yeah, up yeah. and there'll be three trucks and you're like oh no i don't want to float behind <laughs> but it's getting pretty popular it's cool is it uh as far as tournaments go can it support you know larger like half decent sized tournaments or does that make it tough too well, we do have two local trails here in ohio that do a river tournament i think twice a year but we usually only have about 25 to 40 kayaks on the river. Um, two weeks ago, I got in one of the Buckeye Kayak Fishing Trail River Tournament. It was online. It was actually like a statewide smallmouth-only tournament, and it was a team tournament called the Buddy Bass. <laughs> so me and my buddy Jason Meyer, that I fish the river with a lot, uh, we teamed up and we actually got onto the river and we caught 94 and a half. Nice. And we actually won. And that was, that's not the first tournament that I've ever fished, but that's the first time I've ever fished a tournament on the river that I took to buy. Gotcha. That was pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. That That's nice. kind of, you think you'll, you'll try more now that you've, you know, got that one under your belt or? I mean, I, I do like, like, the feeling that I got when I fished that uh, native big bass on the Susky last year, that, that was pretty cool. I like it. Um, I kind of just go fishing to get away from people and, and get in my own little world. And it's like where I connect with my higher power and I just feel at peace when I do that. So Absolutely. You never know. I'll probably jump into a couple tournaments here and there sometimes. Well, the, the Big Bass Power Hour is a completely different kind of tournament. I mean, well, it depends. If you go in with the strategy of, you know, catching the most inches, then that's one strategy. Yeah. But uh, a lot of people don't do that. They focus on just trying to get that one big bite. Big and, yeah, because uh, yeah, uh, how did you do in that uh, last year? Um, I think I was like a little bit higher than the middle <laughs> of the field. So for the first time being out on the Thusky in my life, I didn't think I did too bad. It was a tough bite that tournament. Not this last one, but it was last year. Last year, yep. I, I fished. I fished last year too. I didn't get the fish this year, but I fished last year too, and it was a a very windy day. And I ended up. I had a, a wedding in the afternoon, so I knew I couldn't fish till uh, past noon. So oh, I was like, right. although I told him, I remember telling the the groom, I was like. You know, if I if I get a big bass, I'm ditching your wedding because I'm gonna get my thousand dollars. That's what's cool about that tournament, though. I mean, you can literally go there, catch one fish, and win a thousand dollars. Oh and yeah! Give away all those kayaks and everything. It, it was a really cool experience. Yeah, I got I to meet a lot of people too that you know you talk to on Instagram, and it's cool. I uh, I just made the mistake of going someplace that I hadn't been before, and uh, I should have went a place that I knew. Uh, yeah. Because I I didn't do very good. 
Uh, but uh, it's still fun. I missed a huge bass early, early morning on uh, a walking bait. Like uh, he sucked it down. I think it was a, a spook and he you know, like nailed it, brought it under. I felt the weight of him and tried to set the hook. And when I tried to set the hook, the, the walking bait came flying back at me and I was like, Oh, it was huge too. Uh, you know, That's you never know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Top water for you. Yep. <laughs> but I'll take a top water explosion any day, you know, like that. It was, that was fun. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, um, you know, uh, you, you know, we talked a little bit of before the show that you really do pretty much primarily target smallmouth. And, uh, what is it about smallmouth that, you know, uh, makes you want to, that's the fish that you want to catch. Uh, man, they just fight hard. They're beautiful. They're pretty. And it's just, they're so aggressive and mean. I just love it. I mean, I'll catch a large mouth. Like if the, the river is completely unfishable, we'll go to the lake and, and do a little large mouth fishing. But they just don't, they don't do it for me. What do they say over there? Uh, Smallies drool, largies drool. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I, I agree. And, and that's why I know I, I, you know, obviously you have the smallie games in the background and you're rocking the bronze cult shirt. Um, I, I love that, that free the fighter, you know, cause I mean, that's what same thing, you know, you can have like a 14 inch small mouth that fights a million times harder than a 20 inch large mouth. I mean, uh, I I've caught 20 inch large mouth on the lake by me and, it's like pulling a log sometimes. I mean, sometimes they'll <laughs> give a little bit of fight, but nothing like a smallie, you know, it's, it's crazy. No. Yeah. I mean, sometimes a 17, 18 inch smallmouth make you think you have a 20 and they just, they don't give up and they hit top water just with authority, especially coming up in the fall. And it's just, I love it. And I love being on moving water and on a river, you know, it's just something peaceful about it. I, hard to explain but i'm i know you two understand it and people listening probably do too definitely definitely no i i get it and uh i know Susie. you know uh she has you have moving water you know your banner marsh is a lake but you have moving water around you we do and you know i i still kick myself at the end of the season season every year because we have uh, the mackinac river which is about as equal distance of a drive uh like it is to Banner Marsh, it's just in the other direction. But like the biggest thing for me is um, finding a good access point and B, like the kayak that I have without anything on it, it's like a hundred some odd pounds. And mm -hmm. so a lot of these access points aren't like boat ramps or anything. They're like Drag rough down terrain, <laughs> you know, and everything. And I'm just like, man, like that just, that, <laughs> that doesn't sound like a lot of fun. You know, so like I need to just, you know, rent like an inflatable or something from uh, my kayak dealer and just go out and try it, you know. But again, it's just that whole like I don't necessarily like make the time to do it, even though I know I should. But yeah, hopefully next year I can uh, kick myself and say, all right, you're going to do it this year. Because <laughs> I know there's river. good smallies. Yeah, there's good smallies in that river. Ryan, what do you fish out of? So right now I have a couple different kayaks. Um, most of the time on the river, I'm in a new canoe flint with a Torquedo 403. I did just get a really, really, really good deal on two Hobie PA 12 360s. Wow. So I bought two of those <laughs> that are like wow. brand new and a brand new trailer. Both of them and the trailer for fifty five hundred. Wow! It, what? It was, I thought it was too good to be true, and a couple people were looking on Facebook. It was in one of our local kayak groups, the tournament trail group. I'm like, this is too good to be true. I messaged the guy, didn't hear back from him. An hour later, he came through, and I'm like, dude, I'm on the way. Let me know when I need to be there. I went there. He was an orthopedic surgeon. He bought them. He used them three, four, five times. He said, "Really run into it." Oh my gosh! Oh my god! Yeah. That is like the steal of it, the year. It was, and one of them had a ninety-three SB. I got a power pole on the other one. Oh um, god! 
brand that's new, crazy brand new trailer too wow that's crazy so i'm, I'm wow. looking to, i'm gonna keep both of them because i have a little brother that i fish with a lot too and the reason i got those is because i want to take them out to st Clair and oh yeah in the spring on, on big water and stuff and chase smallmouth out of them because that's, that's what, what the i point. fish out of <laughs> yeah I took yeah. the phone out on St. Clair this spring when Brian <laughs> was with us, and I was a mile offshore in that thing, and it it was sketchy. I was going to say, that sounds a little, a little, uh, not quite my, yeah. <laughs> That's Bro, you know, anything to catch a smallmouth, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and how was that trip? Uh, did you um, do pretty good there? <laughs> so I was there a week before that, and I think we I caught, like, 10, 20 inch smallmouth and, oh. and some of the other ones. So then the week that we went with me, uh, Brian Slate and Brian Schiller and Josh that used to be on Paddle and Finn, it, all them pre spawn fish had done spawn and moved out. Wow. So it, it wasn't it changed that, in that week. Wow. It, in a week, it was crazy. It just, they moved. Uh, I think I caught like 120. Brian caught 120. Um, Brian Slayton caught some, but it was nothing like it was seven days before. It's crazy. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that place is, I've been there once, and uh, I showed you before we started recording my uh, replica, but uh, I, I got my PB out there pre-fishing for uh, a KBF tournament, and man, that thing, it just, they are built different on St. Mm-hmm. Clair than anywhere else. They are just massive footballs yeah. <laughs> it just it is the best smallmouth fishing experience you could probably go for i love that place i got a couple friends that have boats and so i get to go out there when when they find time and they can make time to go out there i'll, I'll go with them and it's it's always a blast i love it heck yeah heck yeah well, very cool. So um, I wanted to, you know, kind of pick your brain a little bit and um, see what uh, techniques I know, uh, you know, there's all sorts of, you know, things we could talk about. But I figured, you know, since we're going into the fall transition in a lot of parts of the country, we could talk about that a little bit. And, you know, um, how you approach that and, you know, uh, where where you, you know, where the Somalis go or, you know, what, you know, how you uh, target them you know that for that transition yeah yeah we can talk about that so like <laughs> around here they they started the transition from where they were in the summer you know in the summertime and the river around here we're looking for the riffles the super fast water some of the the faster runs where there's a lot of current and oxygen that the small mouth like in the summertime but lately it's gotten pretty cold here. The overnight temps have dropped down into the 50s, and mm-hmm. that happened about two weeks ago, and the smallmouth start moving, and they start feeding up pretty heavy. So the last couple weeks, um, they've been sliding back a little bit into a little bit of the deeper water in the river. And, you know, deeper water in our river is not – it's like three to ten foot. We have some deeper sections, but normally that's what you're targeting. And top water in the fall, that's going to be probably my favorite. Um, once the water temp starts getting into the 50s and they start eating top water like crazy. Um, it can still be tough, though. Like a couple couple days ago i went out and slayed him and then the next day we took the actual boat out and hardly caught three fish so wow so it it can yeah you're right it it can really be hit or miss depending you know i think weather changes also you know weather systems um, obviously the big change of cooler days and stuff uh, cooler nights gets them kind of going but you know you know this also is a time where you know you will have you know, some stormy days or colder days that really can shut off a bite, you know, pretty quick. Yeah, and the, and they start grouping up in the fall time, and that's what's cool about smallmouth and, and river systems. Like, you might not catch none for a little bit, but if you can find an area where some of them smallmouth group up, 
it can be fast and furious, and that's what's really good about the fall. Um, once it starts getting a little cooler, like here in the next two, three, four weeks, that's when I like to start to throw a jerk bait. And a jerk bait on the river is money. They start feeding on bait fish heavily in the fall. Um, I usually throw a Lucky Craft Pointer 100. That's that's probably my favorite jerk bait for the river. I used to throw a lot of Mega Bass, but I'm just gonna be honest. The bills break on them so easy. <laughs> yeah. Like, that and you know it kind of hurts when you lose one because those are you know 25 bucks a pop. Too. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it is. You can get a Lucky Craft pointer for you know 14 dollars, 12 dollars, mm -hmm. stuff like that, and you know. And, uh, Go ahead. You're good. Uh, I was just—I was just gonna say, uh, you know, I was gonna talk to you a little bit of how you work them, because uh, you know, I—I I haven't had a ton of luck, and I was talking to uh, a good friend of mine um, who uh, fishes a little bit uh, north of me uh, a lot, and he was telling me that um, a lot of times he basically uh, gives—he doesn't really, you know, do the whole uh, jerk jerk pause thing. He uh, jerks it down to get it to depth, and then just lets it float with the current and he said that's how he has the most luck but um i was curious you know are you you know really working it or you know uh you know obviously i know they say as the water gets colder you know your pause has to get longer and you know that kind of thing but uh, what's your experience with that like how, do, how are you working a jerkbait so when i first started jerkbait fishing um i got to give a lot of credit to jeff little so when I got completely addicted to smallmouth fishing, all I did was study everything I possibly could. Read every book, watch every YouTube video. And I remember watching a lot of his videos and it is about having a jerk bait to spend in the water column. And I do tune them, make sure that they will suspend in the water column. Now when the water changes temperature, you kind of got to play with that. but. That's kind of why I like that Lucky Craft Pointer. It's pretty good out of the package. And uh, so in them deeper areas that are like 6 to 12 foot, that's where we catch a lot of big smallmouth in fall and late fall and into the winter. And we'll cast them out, like you said, reel it down to depth. I'll give it one or two pops and let it sit there five seconds, maybe a little longer, pop, pop let it sit there for another five seconds sometimes they want it sitting there for 10 or 15 and it's crazy because until it happens to you you won't have a lot of confidence but you reel it down and just let it sit there and you're just you know doing nothing and all of a sudden a smallie hits it and wants to jerk the rod out of your hand it's <laughs> once that happens you're addicted and then you yes. won't want to quit throwing a jerk bait Gotcha. And it was funny when you said the pointer 110, I was almost going to say that I know that's one of Jeff Little's uh, go-to ones as well. You know, uh, I just, I remember watching just a video just this last uh, uh, winter where he was talking about uh, throwing one of those. Uh, uh, well, he had a couple different types. I, there's a bunch of different uh, uh, pointer 100s, isn't there? There's like a whole bunch of different models yeah, like of that different like versions and models of like the pointer yeah. jerk bait and whatnot so they yeah. have they have so many different lucky crab jerk baits and another good one is a pointer mr they i guess they said it was specifically made for smallmouth fishing it's called a flash pointer they okay. have a, a 90 i think it's a 97 mr and a 112 mr and a 127 those are the three sizes we throw that a lot too but i always go back to that 100 sp and okay. i've played around with other ones too the <clears throat> other high dollar osp varuna like a high dollar jerk bay to be honest with you it i'm not that big i don't think it matters that much I watch Andrew Hayes. He comes with me and throws a husky jerk. And yep. Him. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, that's cool. I, I forgot that he was kind of in your area too. Do you get to fish with him a lot? That's actually probably my number one float partner. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of his podcast. Um, I uh, I love the work that he does, man. It, that's that's one of my I listen to every week for sure. Uh, Tackle Talk is definitely one that I uh, I hardly ever miss. So yeah, Andrew's a good buddy of mine, and and we met from just fishing on the river one day, you know, and through the Facebook group and stuff, and we linked up probably about five six years ago, and we've both been buddies ever since i mean we we love to home out and we love the river so i fish with him a lot very cool very cool awesome. yeah. so i know um you know we talked a little bit before the show you mentioned top water in the fall and you know i if you if you know andrew at all and i i talked to you too and uh you know like you uh i'm uh like me uh i know you're uh uh a labina lures rico fan um, is that generally the top water you're throwing in the fall or do you uh, mix it up? Um, that's my number one favorite popper is a Labina Lures Rico. And that's the smaller, the Rico and not the Rio Rico. It's the bigger one. Um, I always have a Rico tied on my, one of my rods from spring through fall. I'm a sucker for top water. I mean, that's, that's probably my favorite popper and i think it's the best popper that there is made so it's expensive but like we said earlier you're not really going to lose a lot of them and that's i love it i throw it on a spinning rod 10 pound braid with a 10 pound mono leader yep. I like it. that's pretty much spin. exactly what i throw it on yep nice. yeah and they have them little size six gamagatsu hooks and the smallmouth, when they eat that popper, I have a really good hookup percentage with that thing. They just slurp it right down and be playing with a little drag, and they, they always seem to come to the kayak. Yep, same here. And and, and they are very sticky, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. The definitely gets so funny. Now, uh, that, that brought up another thing to my mind when you said throwing those on a spinning rod. Um, I know Jeff Little uh, throws his um, pointers on spinning rods, too. Do you uh, throw those on spinning rod, too? Yep. So I'm a spinning rod jerkbait guy. Okay. I do, and, and I have a couple different setups that I've tried. Right now, my favorite jerkbait setup is a Mega Bass Windbuster. So it's a 7-foot-2 spinning rod, and it's real moderate. It's labeled a medium, but it's got a real deep, moderate bend. And uh, I got a couple other ones that I throw, but I do the same thing. 10-pound braid, and I'll use a 10-pound sniper for carbon leader. Yep. Yeah. That, that's kind of uh, kind of my standard for pretty much most of my spinning rods. Now with my Ned Rig rod and stuff, I run a little bit lighter. Uh, I usually use 10-pound braid, but then I use a, usually use a little bit lighter of a leader. But... Uh, most of my the stuff I throw on spinning rods is ten pound braid, ten pound leader. So yeah, that's been so I <clears throat> around with like different leader strengths and different brands and stuff. But uh, I got a big sale that I I forget how I got. I got a bunch of ten pound sniper for like six or seven dollars a spool. Wow, nice from like an academy sale uh last fall and i'm in this little facebook group and they alert you when there's deals out mm -hmm. i don't know if they messed up it was something i got from andrew hayes and i went on there and bought like 10 spools of it <laughs> stock and up on it while you can i actually i throw that 10 10 10 pound braid to that 10 pound floor i leave it for pretty much everything on the river um, yep. if I'm throwing like a top water, I'll put a mono leader on, but yeah, that's, we got, you know, when you're in the river, you got a little bit of rocks and we got a lot of, uh, man-made concrete stuff that ends up in the river. So, and I, I don't think I've had that 10 pound sniper break on me once. So. Yeah, no, it's funny. I, uh, what I, I, I just went out with Randy long last week and, uh, he did make me. Uh, he did make me bump up from uh, ten pound to 
I think he was putting 12 or 15 on for the chatterbaits we were throwing, but, uh, but, uh, uh, he was a little bit leery of me throwing 10 pound, but, uh, <laughs> I was like, well, that's pretty much everything I caught, but then we, we were catching twenties and stuff. So it worked out well, you know, it wasn't a question. So, yeah, I saw that. I thought it was pretty cool too, because you talked about wanting to get a 20 this year and then talking about going out with them. And I fished with Randy off of his boat last year and the guy's <laughs> incredible. He's super dialed in. And then I look on my Instagram and all of a sudden I see both you guys holding up 20 inch small now. I'm like, oh. Yep. Oh. He, uh, he, his only, uh, his only request was that if, uh, he got me on a 20 that I had to join smaller games this year. So, uh, <laughs> My board is on its way, and uh, you know he's like, you got to count it towards PA's uh, twenty inch count. He's really, he's like, we we gotta we gotta win. So it's like, okay, all right, that's, if that's the cost of fishing with you, I'll, I'll take it for sure. So yeah, yeah, I know they got a state versus state twenty inch going on this year, and, <laughs> and Pennsylvania has probably over 50 by now <laughs> but but like probably 35 of those are randy you know it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> or 45 or something yeah it's it's just nuts so i mean that, that's what that's what happens when you fish the same body of water all the time and you get super dialed into what mm -hmm. the you're doing and you know every section of that river and you just you get really dialed yep yeah. But also, you know, kind of shows too, like the, like overall, like health of the river too. You know, I mean, if you if you know that there's twenty inch fish stacked up somewhere, you know, I mean, that's a good indication that those fish are healthy. Oh yeah. Well, and he, we were Randy and I were talking too. He was talking to a fish biologist uh, in our area, and um, apparently, I think he was saying in like. Uh, I want to say like 2015, there was a crazy good spawn. Okay. And so that's kind of what we're reaping now is the benefits of that really good spawn. And they said that the 21 and 22 spawns outdid the 15 spawn. So in five, six years, the Susquehanna is going to be even better if, you know, if that's even possible. So I, I'm yeah. like, you know, gosh, I hope at, at that time I'm still fishing as much as I am now because, holy cow, that sounds amazing. I'm looking to come back out there in the next, <laughs> I think, probably in two weeks I'm going to come back out there. Okay. I, I know, when's that? The, the Bassmaster? Bassmaster? That's coming up. Oh, yeah. So I'm that's... On fishing that with Andrew. Okay. Yeah, but... I think he said he had something to do that weekend, so I'm not going to end up fishing that. But I'm still coming out there to fun fish. I just want to make sure it's the weekend before that or <laughs> two weekends <laughs> after that maybe because they're going to get beat up. They are going to get pretty beat up because I know a, a ton of people that are fishing that. Um, I'm actually lending my kayak to Leslie. Uh, Leslie, uh, what's her name? Uh Susie, uh, I'm actually lending her my kayak to fish that because I knew I couldn't fish it. So um, she's, I will be kayakless that weekend. Oh but, my gosh. Uh, uh, no, not Leslie. Um, uh, oh no, Wesley. Wesley, yeah. Right. Wesley uh, Gray? Wesley. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. So. Yeah. I was like, Leslie. I was like, wait a second. That no, no. Yeah. no. Oh, that's I, awesome. Yep. She's going to come borrow my Outback uh, to fish that event. I had offered awesome. to her when we had her on the podcast and she took me up on it. So, Heck uh, yeah. Oh, my uh, gosh. That's awesome. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, Ryan, anytime, you know, you're looking for a place to stay, I got a, I got a, you know, you know, I've had a few people. Uh, hang out here at my house, so you're always welcome uh, cool. if you're looking for a place to stay in Pennsylvania. Now, I like you said, I'm a little further south of, you know, than where some of those tournaments are. I know, you know, the Native and the Hobie last year were, you know, Harrisburg was the bottom boundary, but uh, yeah. but uh, that's only about, I'm about half an hour from the bottom boundary there, so it's not crazy. Cool, yeah. I'll, tell, I'll take you up on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, um, so we talked a little bit about uh, 
you know, fall, uh, any other baits that you throw in the fall? Like I know I, for some reason, lipless works really well for me in the fall and uh, I've had luck with that. And I don't know why, um, necessarily that works so much for me in the fall, but last year, um, my PB came on that and, um, uh, I just started kind of bringing that back out, uh, and, and had pretty good luck. Now tonight it was all the tube. I, I threw a tube all, uh, tonight and, and did really well just letting it pop along in the moving water. But, um, any other baits you use in the fall generally? Yeah. And then, you know, kind of lately I got into throwing the big baits. Oh yeah. Like yeah. Big glide baits, uh, <clears throat> like going in swim baits and stuff like that. And, uh, I've done really well on the river with them. A lot of people aren't doing it around here yet. It just kind of caught fire this year around here. So they will definitely crush a big glide bait in the fall um, or like a jointed bull shad. Just a couple weeks ago, me and Brian Slayton did a float on the river. And he actually has it on his YouTube channel if you, anybody wants to check it out on the creek crawler we were throwing the little jointed six cents the trace it's like a a bull chad wannabe yeah uh, there was a big school of smallmouth busting bait up on the bank and thankfully i had the torpedo i saw that out of the corner of my eye 40 yards away i slammed it full speed and shot over there, made one cast, hooked up, and then he came over, he threw his swim bait, and then he hooked up. So it was pretty cool. But yeah, the big swim baits in the fall. Um, I throw a Chad Chad. I just got one of the Spro, because I have a couple original Chad Chads, but I just got one of the Spro Chads. They're amazing. Okay. I was gonna say those are those are new this year. Is mm -hmm. it this year that they yeah. came out? Yeah, yeah, I yeah I saw I think I saw those on iCast and I've heard some good things about them. So I didn't know if it was gonna be good as the original, and I'm here to tell you that thing swims amazing, and the way they have it weighted, it stays upright all the time. Like even when you blow the bait out, it'll automatically stand straight back up wow it's nice. sweet and that's cool dollars it's it's amazing so and i know a lot of the susky guys started throwing that river city they call it the little bass herd um a couple of randy's buddies and oh, i can't that's larson something i i feel bad i don't i can't think of his name but he was throwing that all for all last fall and just annihilating smallmouth on it. It's like a little six inch glide bait. Okay. Like small profile. Now I know um, when um, Brian uh, Slayton was down at Dale Hollow, um, just he, we were right at the dock and he was throwing that trace over uh, a bass that was bet on the bed, you know, and it, just watching him work that. Um, I, I, as soon as I saw him working that bait, I was like, Oh, I need to get me one of those. Cause that I really like the action on the trace too. That's a kind of sweet little swim bait, and it's not a. It's pretty cheap for those. Yeah. you know. Yeah, it, it is. It's worth the money, and it's not expensive like a bull chad. You know, it's half the price, and it, and it works just as good. Yeah. So. No, I I was I I got one, and now I got the six inch. I think I'd like to try the five inch because I I think it'd be even better here on the river. But uh, um, and there's I, a guy out there by you. Um. Fom lures. Jake Harson throws them a lot. Mm -hmm. He's from Pennsylvania. It's like F O M lures. Okay. Um, I bought one of his glides this spring, and I was catching a lot of a lot of smallmouth on that in the spring on the glide bait. A lot of big ones. He also makes a little jointed one called the sushi, and I caught a bunch on that too till I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> You said and that the, was called the the tushi? The sushi. sushi. Oh, the sushi. sushi. I yeah. thought he said tushi. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. And uh, so what's your uh what's your retrieve like on those guys? Uh just uh, you know, you usually get a sinking one or uh, you know, or are you more fishing so that 
towards the top of the water column. That's a that's been like a learning experience because like a glide bait is usually made for a lake and you have them long glides. But mm -hmm. when we fish a river, I found out you you have moving water the whole time. So working a glide bait is a little different than working it in a lake because it's always moving downstream or you're casting downstream and kind of working it upstream, which is the opposite of what they tell you to do when you're river fishing. You know, right. you, you're always throwing upstream and bringing it back down natural because that's what the fish are used to seeing. And they're always set up nose. They're up. facing right. Yeah, they're facing that direction. But when you throw a glide bait, you can actually get a better action like diagonaling the current, cross current. Mm -hmm. and the same with like a jointed bait, like a bull shad. You can kind of th cross the current, throw diagonal and bring it back. And I've noticed that I've had to play with a lot of uh, lead wire. So I'll put lead wire on the hook and get the glide baits to stink a little more than they normally would. Because I usually buy a slow sink on a glide bait. Okay. But... You know, I know brands vary. Yeah. yeah. I know that lead wire is another big Jeff Little thing that you see him talk about that a lot. Yeah, yeah. They I I put it on my glide baits just to get them down in the water column. Because some of them a lot of the ones I throw are the fast, choppy style glide baits that you work really fast and cut left, right, left, right, left, right. And they'll want to rise in the water column as you're fishing them fast. So if you weight them down a little bit, they'll stay down mid-water column. But a glide bait's fun. I mean, usually you don't catch little jimmies on them, you know? You're right. 17, <clears throat> an 18, a 19, a 20. And it's just a cool, it's a cool feeling when you go out and you throw take take one or two rods take the glide bait rod you might you might cast for an hour and not catch anything you're not getting any followers then all of a sudden you catch a 19 or an 18 it's a sense of accomplishment oh yeah, yeah. for sure now um uh are you what color uh what kind of uh you know colors are you throwing on those generally i know like in susquehanna we throw a lot of uh, like I throw bone a lot just because, uh, that I have the most luck with that. But, um, so I, got that... A, I got a funny story about that. Okay. So I have a buddy <clears throat> that I fish with a lot too, and he's kind of newer and I've been kind of like mentoring him on the river and we bought these glide baits or seven inch glide baits. They're jointed and we bought blanks. So they're, okay. they're straight white. And he wanted to get his painted like a shad. And he wanted to match the hatch. And I, I said, that's, that's cool. So he sent it off to a, a reputable painter. And he got it painted. And I just threw that that blank, that bright white one. And I caught so many fish on it. And he was so worried about getting his painted and paying $50. <laughs> to get painted. I'm like, dude, I told you it doesn't matter. If they're going to eat it, they're going to eat it. You right. Know? It's, I don't, I know, like, we all dive down that rabbit hole and worry about the colors. And I, I have boxes of tackle right in front of me. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but I've learned after going through all, buying all that stuff that it doesn't matter that much to me anymore. It just seems like if they're going to eat something, they're going to eat it. Yeah, especially smallmouth. I mean, yeah. they are are not the most choosiest. You know, sometimes you know, sometimes it does. You, it does seem to to make a difference. But you're right. If if they're in the mood to smack something, they're gonna mm -hmm. smack it probably yeah. no matter what color it is. Well, the bone's been the best for me, pretty much. I got a couple normal shad colored ones. Yeah, cool. Um. Well, all right. Uh, you know, um, any other, you know, uh, I know we talked uh, about fall. Uh, we talked a little bit about as the water gets colder, you know, kind of switch to jerk baits. Um, 
any other like you know things that you really love throwing and and what time of year do you usually you know throw those kind of things well I'm, like i said i always have a popper tied on a rico um i always have a ned rib tied on yep all year long and then i like to throw a swim bait a lot it's on a little ball head or if you've ever seen the mega bass body balance jig head body bounce body body balance okay so mega bass balance jig head they call it i have a do it mold it's like almost like a, a damiki red hig exactly right yeah yeah and i have the do it molds swim bait head it, it's identical to it i throw that that head a lot but I throw it. We have a local swim bait company here called Big Joshy Swim Bait. Oh, yeah. And I've heard of them. Yeah. People, I'm very familiar with them. Yeah. <laughs> I've, been, I've been repping them since day one. And they are amazing little swim baits. They make a 2.75 and a 3.25 that we throw a lot here. And they're just a little, little minnow bait. And, you know, spring, summer, and fall. I remember last fall we were putting them on a little football head and just tossing them out, creeping them on the bottom, and just getting hammered. So I always have one of them tied on, pretty much all year too. Yeah. No, I, I forgot about Josh, Big Joshy's. Um, that was another you know thing that they're they're kind of Ohio based, right? Yeah, they're out of Columbus, Ohio, and. Uh, they're at, they're at the expo all the time. They're probably the main exhibitor at the Ohio expos. They usually have like a show color too, right? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. They had one that I named last year. It was uh, Dirty Money. We I named it, and it's got a, a chartreuse and green pumpkin. Yep, and it's nice. you know good for it's the reason I named it that. I said it's going to be money in the dirty water. And I'm like, hey, maybe we should call it Dirty Money. <laughs> I, I actually, uh, I didn't make it to the show, but um, Matt, uh, who used to be with Paddle and Finn, now uh, him and uh, Brad are doing their own thing. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but he actually gave me a, a pack of the Dirty Money Big Joshies that he had. Uh, so I was like, oh, cool. You know, I was f happy to get to throw those because they actually, I, I do like that color on the Susky. Yeah. Uh, so... It's crazy. And then, you know, of course, you can't get away from the Ned Rig. I mean, when you fish in the wintertime, like I do here all winter long, Ned Rig is usually king. Once the water gets below 45, <clears throat> jerkbait still, jerk still slays them. But oh, yeah. the Ned Rig is, you know, in the wintertime, that's the deal. Yep. That's when I and like I, fishing the most. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's nobody out on the river. You know, Brad, and Matt, they'll be out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't miss Brad in his uh, uh, big bird yellow, suit. Big bird suit. That's me shirt out there. <laughs> Mine's just as bad. Mine's bright orange, so you know. Yeah, yeah. But that's that's a fun time to fish and. You know, it's kind of cool to see where you catch them in the fall and then see where they go to in the wintertime. And it's kind of like a little game to try to find find where they go in the winter, mm -hmm. find winter holes and stuff. Because we don't have a lot of smallmouth on our river. It might seem like it, but, I mean, if you do a float in the wintertime and you cover – you know, three, four miles, you might only catch two or three fish, maybe. Or get skunked. Yep. I get or skunked might, a lot in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> or, or you might catch five. I mean, it's just, it's tough, but it's rewarding. This year, I really had a lot of luck uh, with blade baits in the winter, in the cold, cold winter, you know. Uh, and uh, I, one of my buddies was showing me, you know, uh, the Damiki vault. And he was like, just cast it out and just raise it up off the bottom. As soon as you feel it vibrate, kill it again. And then just do that over and over back to the boat. And um, even over the Ned rig, I caught more fish on the blade bait doing that. 
um, than I did on the Ned rig last winter. But um, usually the Ned rig was kind of my go to besides that. So. Yeah, and I know I don't know what what weight you like to throw on the Susky, but I've noticed like here on our river, it doesn't move close to as fast as the Susky moves. Like I throw an eighth of an ounce here, pretty much everywhere. And when I went to the Susky and I threw an eighth of an ounce, you still can, but it, it's it's moving way faster in the Susky. There's a time and a place. Yeah. It, um, there's, there's definitely like right now I could even get away with a one sixteenth in certain spots. Um, uh, but there's definitely times where an eighth, uh, anytime it's windy or, you know, or the current's moving, I usually bump up to an eighth or maybe even a little heavier than an eighth. Um, three sixteenths or something. Three, yeah. Three sixteenths is about as heavy as I'll go with the Ned rig. But, um, so eighth, Eighth and one sixteenth are usually my go tos. Uh, eighth if it's windy, or the current's moving, but one sixteenth if it's somewhat calm and um, not flowing like crazy. So, yeah. But um, okay, uh, well, um, any other thing, any other tips, or uh, anything you could think of that you would say if someone's looking to just kind of go hit smallies for the first time? Yeah, I mean, so. A lot of people, you know, they message me here in Ohio, and a lot of people want to. Everybody thinks there's a uh, magic spots or something, and they're always, "Hey, I'm looking to fish the river. You got any spots that you can send me to?" And I remember when I started, I didn't know where to go either, and I, I just kind of went down to the river and just started walking and fishing. And the more time that you put into fish in the river and you'll learn you know where they go and you'll find different areas and my best suggestion to everybody that that asked me here on this river is pick a spot that's 100 yards long and start there and and maybe maybe under around the dam or pick a bridge and and fish around that bridge for 100 yards um keep it simple Cause it can be overwhelming, you know, and especially yeah. if you've never fished in a river before. Oh, well, the first time I started fishing the Susky, I was completely overwhelmed. Cause <laughs> I mean, it's, there is so much river and just trying to, to learn it. But, but it was exactly like you said, basically what I did is I picked the area between the two launches closest to me. And I said, I am going to learn every inch of this area. Yeah. And, yeah. um, I just kept fishing it and fishing it and fishing it until I, I learned exactly, you know, what works nine times out of 10 times, you know? Um, and, and now I know that section of river by me pretty darn well. Yeah. That's the same thing that I told my buddy that I've been teaching. He wants to hop around the different areas and go here because somebody <clears throat> caught two twenties on this stretch. We need to go there. And I'm like, pick, the area by your house float that over and over and over and over and over. And now he's one of the best in that area. Like he, he always catches him on that float and he does really good. And you know, you can take stuff you learn from that section and translate to all the other ones. Right. Right. You know? so. Build your confidence and everything. And you know, you know, yeah, definitely. If you learn, you know, where on the, the, like the structure and stuff that you find them on in your section, then you just go look for those sections in other, uh, or that, that same kind of structure in other sections. And, you know, odds are, you know, there, you're going to find fish there. Yeah. I mean, I think I got the first time I went to the Susky, it was like sensory overload. I felt like <laughs> a little kid on Christmas morning. Everywhere I looked, I'm like, oh, that look at that. Oh, that's good. That, and it was just, I'm like, this is overwhelming. It everything looks good. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's amazing. But I can't wait to come back. I'll tell you that. Well, dude, if 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 you're, uh, let me know when you're in the area. Maybe I'll try and get out and fish with you because that'd yeah. be that'd be cool. 
as long as uh, I get my kayak back from uh, Wesley. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just right now. I'm so nervous about doing anything to my kayak that I would break it or anything. So I'm like being super careful with it. So it's going to be good for her. But uh, yeah, so you have a a pro angler. I have an Outback. So okay. Yep. Yep. And you got motor. Nope. No motor. I'm 100% pedal. So. Uh, motor is on my list for sure. Um, actually, I'm actually, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to maybe try out the innovative sportsman Osprey with a motor. Um, yeah. I've really uh, been doing a lot of research on that, uh, kind of checking out Jeff and uh, Jake has one now too. And, uh, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm leaning that direction for my next kayak so we'll see if i, if I lived there in pennsylvania i would 100 percent have one of those yeah yeah and so once i got a motor i'm spoiled now i don't even want to fish without it on the river <laughs> <laughs> well my my local trail is still human powered only so um uh, so that's it's uh, one of the last ones around here that is like that and i really kind of like that about it um I, I feel like, you know, it, it allows me to feel like I can be competitive in it, uh, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Everything's on even playing field. Yeah. Right. Yep. So um, I don't know how long it'll stay that way, but uh, we'll see. We, we, we're getting a lot of people asking about changing that rule, so we'll see. Oh, really? Yeah, but, but you never know, you know. Yeah. Um, it's it's kayak angler, so as long as kayak angler stays uh, human powered, then uh, um, you know we, we'll probably you know go with the trend if if they if kayak angler, anglers as a whole uh, switches over to to motors, then you know we'll we'll probably follow suit, I imagine. But uh, until then, I'm happy to to keep it human powered because, like I said, it makes me at least feel somewhat competitive. Susie, you have a motor. I do. I just got one this year and I absolutely love it. I've got a Newport 180 and it just, it makes covering water just so much easier, you know? And, you know, when I'm on my home waters, like I don't even really take it unless I'm really going to be going through a lot of water, but like, Banner Marsh is like super weedy and got stumps and stuff like that. So 90% of the time I don't even take it. But like if I'm fishing a new body of uh, water for a tournament or whatnot, I'm 100% using that motor because it just it's it just makes your kayak so much more versatile, you know, and you save a lot of energy that way, too, oh, whether yeah. you're, you know, coming from a paddle or a pedal kayak, which I mean, I have a Hobie. Uh, 360 and you know I'll I'll still paddle and everything but like using that motor to like just move from spot to spot to spot and then like I'll pedal around in the area and just kind of move around a little bit then when I'm done I'm just like all right I'm gonna cruise on to the next spot it just it, it's definitely changed my approach to pre-fishing for one thing and then just, you know, having the ability to just cover a lot of water, you know, on tournament days or even just for fun fishing. Um, I used it uh, this past week when I was up on uh, Lake Michigan in Manitowoc, uh, just trolling the river in the mouth of the harbor for Keating Salmon. And it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. It's amazing. And my shoulder is really messed up. And Oh, it, it saves that too. You know? Yeah. I, uh, I actually, I had shoulder surgery uh, last August cause I just, the end of my collarbone was like super just like degenerated. I had a bunch uh-huh. of bone spurs in it. Luckily nothing to do with the um, rotator cuff or anything like that. But I mean like that surgery, like just, it saved me. Like I was kind of worried cause like I got to the point to where I couldn't even like pick up a net you know, mm-hmm. I just had such pain, but yeah, th- there's some good wear and tear on your body in different ways when it comes to fishing that a lot of people sometimes don't realize until yeah, you're starting sure. to hurt from it. And you're like, oh man, I'm getting old now. <laughs> yeah. 
I um that I was I should say that uh, with kayak anglers they do allow if if you have a uh, physical issue um, they do you can you know uh, if you have a, a physical excuse like I or a medical reason they can do you, yeah accommodations yeah or yep, yeah so you can they do allow motors for that so um, but yeah it's definitely on my list um, I just not sure if it's gonna be a new kayak or if I'm gonna add a, a, a uh, motor to the outback i've been looking at there's a, a lot of there's a lot of cool uh cool ones like uh texas power has one that mounts right to the rudder of the outback and um andrew just, uh, Ace just put one on hers and he he loves it an outback. Yep, yep nope and i i was gonna uh as soon as i figure out which motor i was gonna do if i do it on the outback i was gonna talk to him about how he did the foot control steering because i was always curious about that yeah he said actually he said he looked everywhere and he only found one video and of course it was jeff jeff yeah <laughs> but, it but he never... even did it different that than jeff i think right yeah he did because the video that jeff had it actually didn't have video of it on the water steering and andrew said there was some kind of interference the way With that he pedals. did it yeah ended up getting the uh, h-rail mounts and mounting them to the h-rail 90 degree mounts and it's perfect it's sweet he can use his pedals and foot steering and everything at the same time and yeah he he told me he said man i don't know why i didn't do this years ago <laughs> no i i if if i do not do the uh the osprey that is probably the direction i'll go um yeah. so i'm just trying to weigh the those two things right now uh, i know but, and money it's expensive oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah well that and just the battery you know yeah. Yeah. i mean that that's one of the like the battery and the motor itself are your two biggest expenses right now i mean it's yeah it's a good chunk of change yeah all right, man. Well, um, I, uh, we wanted to give you a chance to shout out um, where folks can find you uh, on social media and uh, um, any sponsors or anything else like that that you want to shout out. Cool. Yeah. Um, I'm mostly on Instagram. It's Ryan doll 82 on Instagram. And then, you know, I'm on Facebook too, Ryan doll. I, I post more like my recovery stuff on Facebook and, and, everyday life and all my fishing stuff's on instagram um sponsors i'm really not sponsored by anybody so but i do have a lot of companies that have helped me out and i mean if you kind of say i'm sponsored pro staff whatever that'd be brian at Lavina lures he's been really generous and, and he's helped me out before big joshy swim baits i think they're the best little swim baits around and river city swim baits that's them little glide baits a lot of us are throwing he's got some new stuff coming out i had a prototype of a jointed swim bait that he had and it's going to be sweet i flipped the kayak and lost it um, oh. yeah so river city swim baits you can look that up he's got some sweet glide baits and then of course the boys over at Achigan, you know, they've they've been uh, good to me, and I've been repping them since day one. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of – I love their stuff. They have, And I love what they're doing over there, too. That's another one of the, the podcasts that I, I definitely don't miss is Smalley, uh, Smalley Talk, uh, definitely yeah. one of my favorites. So yeah, They're hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, all right, well um, – Ryan, thanks again so much, man. Um, appreciate you coming on the show and, um, you know, just talking smallies with us, you know. Yeah. Uh, very cool. Yes, so, thank you. And uh, next time you're in PA, uh, let me know, and uh, I'll see if I can get out on the water with you, all right? Yeah. Shouldn't be long, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, Susie, anything you want to add here at the end? I can't think of anything. So all right. definitely good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very cool. All right, guys. Well, thank you again for tuning in uh, for another episode of Bass Fishing for Noobs here on the Paddle and Fin Podcast, where we bring you the techniques, the tricks, and the tips to help you rip more lips. You guys have a good night. Later. Later.